LA has some of the most expensive real estate in the country. The median sales price out here is just shy of a million dollars. And for that, you're most likely getting a condo in this city. But there are some spots you can still get an actual house in Los Angeles for under a million dollars. One of those being in the Valley. I've been monitoring this area on Zillow for quite a while and finally got the chance to tour some places in person. So I'll show you guys what under a million dollars gets you for a house if you're willing to venture over to the Valley. This first house is listed at 975 and it's been sitting for a while, so I was interested to see why that was. I toured these houses with my friend Jamie, who's a real estate agent here in LA with Realify Realty. I'll put her info down below if you guys are looking for a house. Outside is cute. It is, I like the fresh grass, like that is nice. So heading inside, there's this living area. You can see they've completely renovated this house. There's new flooring, recessed lights, some light fixtures, things like that. And then walking over, there's little dining area and the kitchen. This type of kitchen is straight off HGTV. I feel like we see these all the time. Definitely feels like a standard flip. Right. I think. Pretty basic countertops. I see these countertops in a lot of houses. And yeah. then you got your classic subway tile backsplash. They um, didn't do a refrigerator, so you'd have to buy your own refrigerator. If you're looking at a flipped house, this kind of kitchen you're gonna see a lot because they're pretty cost effective. A lot of people still like them, but I know a lot of people are over this style as well. I totally get that. I'm pretty over it too, if I'm being honest, but I get why they do it. It's pretty cost effective and it looks, you know, nice enough. There is a door to the backyard off the kitchen and this size backyard you would just never get in say West LA. It's a pretty big backyard. It's got a two car garage, tons of potential back here, but one thing that I think a lot of people would think is a deal breaker. So probably biggest con is that this house is like right by the freeway. Yeah. So you so. hear that a little bit. You don't hear it in the house at all. Yeah, so I think all the windows are double panes. So when you're inside, if the doors and windows are closed, you're not gonna hear anything. But obviously when you're back in here in the backyard, you're gonna hear a little bit of noise here. Mm -hmm. The trees probably do a good job of blocking it a little bit too and it gives you the illusion that it's like scenery it instead of the, yeah. the freeway, yeah. I'm sure this is a big reason for the price on this house because not a lot of people are dying to live next to the freeway. Heading back into the house, there are three bedrooms and one bathroom. The one bathroom is right off the living area in between all of the bedrooms. Obviously not ideal, probably that three bedroom share one bathroom. Oh, this is interesting. So like you really gotta go all the way in and then close it and there's like a random little space over there. <laughs> yeah, they should have just maybe made that all part of the shower and made it bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And they did some shower glass, but they didn't finish it. Right. I think like, honestly, I feel like if they had put the shower glass here, it might make the whole area feel even smaller. That's true. Because like, if we're, as we're standing here, you know, it, does it, would, it would be a lot tighter. If, like this is, it's pretty small. This is one of the second, the guest bedrooms here. Yeah. It's good light. Mm -hmm. I like this room. It's yeah. actually pretty big. Good size. Yeah, it faces the front of the house here. You got three windows, which is pretty nice. It's always nice when you have like kind of a corner with mm -hmm. some more windows. Yeah. Like Heading down the hallway is two more bedrooms, both about the same size. This one faces the backyard, which is nice. So another pretty good size, mm -hmm. maybe like an office or something. And this last bedroom, also a pretty good size, but there is something a little bit weird about it. So interesting note here is that the previous owner disclosed that this had been an unpermitted bathroom mm -hmm. and then for whatever reason they had to turn it back into a closet. So maybe the city was not happy with the unpermitted addition. Sounds but, like it. But um, it's, it's interesting because it's quite a small space. It is. It must have been a pretty small bathroom and it still has the fan which is actually- Still has the fan and like the- the outlet here. I mean, they might have scrapped it too because they're like, the bath. this is a pretty small bathroom. It probably right. doesn't even have a shower. Maybe just a toilet and a sink. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it would be nice. I think it would add a lot of value in the house if you could figure out a place to add another bathroom. Yeah, definitely. This house also has a two-car garage in the backyard, which is a major plus because it could potentially be converted into an ADU. So this house, pros are that it's turnkey. It has a pretty big backyard and three bedrooms. But the cons are it's right next to the freeway and it only has one bathroom. Room. This next house is in North Hollywood. It's listed at $750,000, but it does need a lot of work, so that will take quite a bit of money. Yes, this is clearly a major fixer. We're mm -hmm. here in North Hollywood. It's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, $750,000, which is a crazy price for Los Angeles. Actually insane. I've been looking quite a bit, and when I saw that, I was like, we gotta check it out. One thing I'm already making a note of is it needs major landscaping help, which I learned from my Palm Springs project is not cheap. 
So when you walk in, there's a bathroom right at the entrance. Looks like this is the guest shared bathroom. Yeah, it's in rough shape to be expected. But walking in here, I feel like these floors aren't the worst, you know? Do you think these could be refinished? And I definitely work? think so. These look like original hardwood floors, so you could definitely sand them and polish them and refinish it. With a fixer, you really gotta be creative and look past the general current state of the house, but it's definitely a win that it has hardwood floors. Right, the kitchen. Honestly, not as bad as a sh of shape as I would've thought. Like, would totally gut it, Yeah. but I expected worse. Yeah, the layout works, and there's actually a pretty nice sized pantry, which is nice. Okay, first bedroom. Wow, the carpet. It's crazy, I wonder what they had here. I that know. It was so large. For this a long is definitely time. the, I think, the smallest bedroom, so maybe an office. But at least carpet is pretty easy to tear out. It's not like some tile where you gotta like really work at that. So that is wild. This probably was their office and they had, I can imagine they had all their awards mm -hmm. hanging here. Realistically, this room is, isn't even that much work to fix up, you no, think? No, because I think, you know, you're gonna redo the flooring. And you know what? I bet you underneath the carpet is the original hardwood. This is interesting, this cutout feature in the hallway. Definitely. It like gives you a clear shot of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's so random, honestly. The second bathroom is a pretty decent size. It is a full bathroom with a shower and everything, but definitely would want to redo this. So this bedroom is still occupied, but it's in the front of the house here. Cool that it has two windows. Mm -hmm. It's right. a good size. Mm -hmm. And it has hardwood floor. Yeah. That's actually really cool. Yeah. It's in good condition too. It is. So it's like, you really gotta think like, if there wasn't all this stuff in here, what it would be mm -hmm. like. And so this, I think is the largest bedroom. So I guess it's the primary and it does lead out to the backyard here. Yeah. Again, with the carpet, it wouldn't be that hard to take that out. Mm -hmm. um, I bet you, you know, once some lights coming in here, it would feel nicer and paint. I've yeah. actually seen much more major fixers and this is still pretty pretty light cosmetic work. Heading into the backyard, I really like this little sort of courtyard area. Although the deck was kind of falling apart, so it definitely needed some work, but then you've got this huge yard space and a decent sized garage. I see a lot of potential in this little courtyard area. I really like this tree. Yeah. It's kind of cool. This deck definitely needs to be, do you it's think just redone? I think it's got a lot of termite damage and wood rot, so it's probably gonna need to be completely redone. Yeah. But this room like here is interesting. It's kind of like attached to the house and there's a washer dryer inside. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it's permitted or not. Getting the vibe, it's probably not permitted. I but. think so, yeah. But it looks like it could be like a workshop. Maybe if you cleaned it up, you could make it into an exercise area or something like yeah. that. Yeah, or like a studio, filming, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Well, this lot is really big. It's over 6,600 square feet. Mm -hmm next door neighbor has an ADU, a two-story ADU in place of where the garage is, so it has a lot of potential. Definitely. The next door unit is now three units with the front house and I think two units with the ADU. It's a lot of work, but the price is really good. It's just, there's nothing in this price point anywhere in Los Angeles. No. And actually with the lot size and the house, it actually has a lot of potential, so I think investors would definitely be interested. So house number two, tons of potential with this house. I think with some work, it really could be a great home, but the neighborhood, I did love. It did feel a little less safe to me and that really is a big priority for me. Here is house number three. This one's listed right at a million and has been fully renovated already. All right so this one definitely night and day from the last one. Yes looks like it's completely move-in ready doesn't need any work at mm -hmm. all. The AC was blasting most of the time we we're in there so decided to just voice over a lot more of this but you can tell they did a very upscale renovation. While this isn't my specific taste I can appreciate that the work seems seems very well done. They definitely didn't just go with the cheapest finishes out there. I know from my own renovation experience that this type of kitchen would be a lot more expensive than that classic white shaker cabinet kitchen that we see in a lot of flips. So it's cool to see that they went for a more upscale look. Like I've got to hand it to them, the black kitchen is pretty cool. They really made a statement with this fireplace. Overall, I would say this house, it's just not my particular style, but it is nicely done. The backyard is small, but it is well landscaped. I like what they've done. Like this isn't a huge yard space, but it's nice. It's actually like a pretty cool little spot to hang out. This is kind of a cool door. A cool thing about this bedroom is it has a slightly vaulted ceiling and its own ensuite bathroom. So this whole place feels really nicely done. This feels so different from the last flip. The last flip felt like, you know, they were definitely budget conscious. Right. This one, they 
It's two shower stuff, heads? Sure. Yeah. Two shower heads. The um, light in there, that's cool. Yeah, and definitely you can tell that the workmanship and the finishes here are higher quality. Then heading over to the other side of the house, there's another bathroom and two more bedrooms, but someone was working in the other bedroom. So we didn't go in there, but they said it looked just like the second bedroom that I'm about to show you. It's really cool that they already have nice window coverings and a built-in closet. You don't get that with a lot of flipped houses. The owners actually were living in this one, so I think they renovated it with what they wanted in mind. So they did pick nicer finishes than someone who's just trying to flip a house and make money off it. This house was not my personal style and it was also in a pretty weird location, right next to a middle school, a warehouse building, and an apartment building. Not really a neighborhood feel, so those were really the cons, but I will say it's pretty well done and I bet somebody will love it. And this last house is a four bedroom, two bathroom, pretty far into North Hollywood. All right, last house of the day. This one feels pretty nice inside. Yeah, super nice and open. Yeah. Very large living space. And this is the only one that we've seen today that has four bedrooms. Wow, pretty big. This one is very similar to the first one, but I would say it's a better layout. It's more open and this is probably a bit bigger of a kitchen. This is pretty cool to have like an actual laundry room. I really just like how bright it is in here. So there's one bedroom over here near the entrance mm -hmm. and then three over here. This first bedroom, great size, great lighting. It does look out onto a pretty busy road, but it's a good room. Yeah, so definitely a good size for an office or a bedroom. Space and light. Yeah, there's like room for a closet, do some kind of built-in in there. The so lucky. This is the bathroom, the shared bathroom. Wow. It's cool that they continued the tile all throughout. Right. Yeah, and hey, this one actually has shower glass. Look at that. And down the hall is a third bedroom. It really is rare to find four bedrooms for under a million dollars in LA. And that is because this one, it really is pretty far north. And then this bedroom has its own ensuite bathroom. It actually also has an entrance to the backyard. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. This is definitely the biggest and the best room because it has access to the backyard. It could potentially be a good room to rent out, although I don't really think I want to do that. And it does have its own little bathroom. Now checking out the backyard. It's a nice lot. And you have your detached garage here. So the garage, you actually enter from the alley side. Oh, interesting. I mean, hey, that's actually so cool. If you made that in ADU, it would have its own entrance. Exactly, yeah. This garage was actually finished with drywall and recessed lights, so it was pretty nice. Pros of this house are it's the biggest one. Four bedrooms is kind of crazy for a million dollars in LA. But the cons, it is on an extremely busy road. It's a lot further north than all of the other houses. And when we really looked up close, the craftsmanship was not there. It was pretty cheaply done. So I think what we've learned is you can find a house for under a million in the valley, but there's probably gonna be something weird about it if it's a single family house. It might be a weird location. It might only have one bathroom or chances are it's a total fixer. But the reality is at this price point, you're probably still not gonna find the perfect house. So that was my house hunt. I didn't feel like any of them were quite right for me, but I'm glad I went and looked in person because online, a lot of these houses look better. In person, you find that there usually is some kind of catch even at this million dollar price point. Okay, I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along on this house hunt and I will see you in the next video. Bye!